Well, hi there, food friends. It's Kevin. Hey there, and I'm Ralph. I'm behind the camera. And welcome to Cavalcade of Food at Home. All right. And here we are, Ralph, back in our Detroit kitchen. Had to come down to the big city for a few days to, to do some things. That's no reason why we can't still provide some fun uh, recipes. Hey, we got to, doesn't matter where we are, we got to eat, right? right? So um, I'm actually going to make a... So I don't have a, a chalkboard to sign in. So today we're going to make a southern chess cake. Mm. Okay. Now we've had chess pie before, uh, which here in Michigan, chess pie is not a real common thing. Um, I think it, you know, it's really a southern dish or southern pie, the chess pie. Remind me what that is. Uh, it's kind of a custardy pie, oh, yeah. but uh, custard-based pie. We don't have it much here in Michigan, other than if you go to a southern restaurant or a Seoul restaurant, they might have it on the, the dessert menu. But normally, chess pie is not a big thing in Detroit. Uh, in Detroit. We're actually in Michigan, and it's too bad because it's a wonderful pie. But we're going to make a cake version okay. of this, okay? And it's actually pretty simple. So I'm going to start with a yellow cake mix. All right, this is going to be, we're going to make the crust first. So we're going to put in the yellow cake mix. Then I'm going to put in one egg. The whole recipe calls for four, you'll need four eggs for the entire recipe. But we're going to put one egg in the crust and let me get a spatula here and then I've got one stick of butter Ralph melted I'm gonna put that whole thing in there okay so a yellow cake mix a stick of melted butter and one egg and that butter is good to the last glob <laughs> <laughs> make sure you get it. Oh, we do never want to miss out on any butter. All right, so now we're going to just mix this until it comes together. And this is going to be our crust. And this won't take long at all. I'll need those other three Wait eggs for the filling. Now, you said crust, but it's a cake. It's a cake, but it'll sort of be our boundary. Think of it as, well, uh, I'm still going to call it a cake, but it's actually kind of like almost chess squares. Oh, okay. okay. So it's going to be kind of But thick. I think I call, I'm call i calling it a cake because we're using a cake uh, mix. mix, okay? So here, this is, this is the, that's it. It's, mm, okay? You can smell it. Can't, can't you? Yeah, I'm going to mix it for another minute. So then it mixes, mix this for about two minutes. I'm going to wash my hands and we'll come back. Hey, Kevin, you know what makes every cake and pie delicious? What's that, Ralph? Cream cheese. <laughs> yes, it does. I see you got some softening over there. I do. It's been out. You know, like, and I don't know how many times we've said this and our food friends know that when you're baking anything, you want your, all in the ingredients, your eggs, your cream cheese in this case. Everything should be at room temperature. If you're using a if milk is in the recipe, always start with um, room temperature. Hey, where'd you get the silly buddy? <laughs> <laughs> well, look how easy this is. Now, you if you don't want to, I washed my hands so they're clean. Um, but and I find that frankly, fingers and hands are the best tool for this. But you could use a spatula or something if you just didn't want to get your hands dirty. So after beating it with the mixer, you it came to that consistency where you could just yes, make it as the just like this. Oh, that looks easy and fun. Okay, so I mean that couldn't really be any simpler. What size of uh, this is a nine by thirteen? Okay. I did not grease it, so I there's another it. thing to tell you. Okay. Okay. So it's not greased. Is that because there's so much butter in the Yeah, because of the the butter or the oil. I think it isn't isn't gonna be necessary. Okay, so we've got our base. we've got our base, our crust, okay, um, down. So we're just gonna use the same bowl here, okay? And we're gonna put the cream cheese in first. And what I wanna do, again, we've had this out softening. So that's one package. One eight ounce package of cream cheese. And I'm going to 
do is we're going to fluff this cream cheese up a little bit first, okay? So we'll just put it in there. And we'll get it. So it really, just if it's softened and then you start beating it, it really gets fluffy. Yeah, it does. And I just like to add a little air to it so that when I add the other ingredients, it doesn't get really, it doesn't get too lumpy. I see. Um, okay, that's good. All right, so we've we've got our cream cheese kind of blended in. Now what I'm going to do, Ralph, is we're going to add all of our other ingredients, which includes these three eggs. Okay, one, two. Again, eggs are at room temperature. So the total recipe calls for four because you started with. One I had egg. one in the. For the crust. Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. So there's our three eggs. And is this when you add the vanilla? Yep. We're going to put a teaspoon of vanilla in there because, you know, vanilla is always good for baking. Um, and it will add a little brightness and to it. Teaspoon of vanilla. Okay. Then I've got... You could measure this out if you have it in bulk. We need a we need a we need one pound. Really? Yeah. Of powdered sugar. Whoa. Now you know powdered sugar. One pound sounds like a lot, it but it's really I don't know how many cups this is. Let me see if it says quarter cup, um, and there's about fifteen quarter cups. So this is probably less than four cups of of powdered sugar. Oh, okay. Um, so like I'm just, it, you need a pound of it and it, you can buy it in a pound thing. So I just, this way I don't have to measure anything. We're going to put the whole Miguel I know in there. Our Southern friends like their stuff sweet. Yes, they, they do. do. That, their that's, their desserts. that's one thing that we have noticed when we travel in the South there, that their desserts are sweet. Not that up here in the North, our desserts aren't sweet. But I don't think they're quite as sweet. Now this is going to come together. Now look how you know. Look how that um, powdered sugar has dissolved already. I'm gonna, but we're gonna do a nice a scrape, scrape down the sides. of the bowl. And the eggs give it a nice yellowness. Yeah, and the eggs will help lift the filling here. Now, I've got the, of course, we have our wonderful 1963 Westinghouse Terrace Top Range here, Ralph. Probably still in my top five favorite stoves. That's a beauty. Um, it really is. And I got it to 350. Let me just check. Yep. I've got an oven thermometer. You know, especially all ranges, many of them aren't exactly true in other words you set it for 350 and it might not be 350 on the nose it might be 360 it might be 340 it might be something like that i always keep older stoves tend to be off almost all the time i have only had a couple where we're spot on so i always keep a, a thermometer in the oven and it's just a good idea uh, so that you know whether or not your oven is too fast or that is to say it runs hot, or if it's too slow where it runs cool. And that's good to know so that you can adjust the- Accordingly. Um, yeah, you can adjust the control to get you to the desired temperature. Again, in this case, 350 degrees, and we're gonna bake it. Well, we're gonna start at 40 minutes and go from there. Um, I'm going to kind of keep an eye on it you want the this, what I'm putting in right now, should get nice and just light golden brown on the top. Okay, so here, Ralph, in it goes. So that's the, is that the last step? That's it. So, so this it's is like a cream cheese. Well, now see, I got some cream cheese there that didn't that get didn't mixed. Blend. Oh. It's okay, that happens sometimes at the very bottom of the bowl. Oh. And that's because the beater didn't get Reached down there. Yeah. So you know what? I'm just going to mix it in. It'll all melt. Believe me, it's okay. 
these are things that kind of you learn. you learn as you go along and you can't freak out. You yeah. just got to keep going. Uh, the cream cheese will melt and it will... But we're just encouraging it a little bit. Along yeah, the exactly. Little, the little bits that didn't get completely... But most of it got blended. mixed pretty well and creamy. Okay, so now we're just going to take our spatula. It almost looks like a pudding. Yeah, it does kind of, doesn't does it? Have it? That, does it have that kind of texture or consistency? Yes. Let's make and a pistachio pudding cake. I think we did. Oh, I'm pretty really, sure we made one. It's probably very few things we haven't made at this point. What are we at? Uh, oh, I don't know. About over uh, 300, 300, 309, something yes. like that. 308. We okay. We just recently celebrated our 300th episode and got so many nice comments from our friends it and viewers. Was. Okay, so um, let me just wipe the hands clean, Ralph, and then. The next thing is we want to put this on the middle rack of the oven, 350 degrees. All right. You know what? I'm going to go 35 minutes. Just to make sure. Yeah, it's going to need between 35 and 45 minutes. So let's see how it looks at 35 and we'll come back. So Ralph, I checked it at 35. I wanted it to go a little bit longer. So now it's been 40 minutes. Oh, God, the smell. And look at that. Wow. Isn't that beautiful? It's a work of art, and it smells so good. It so smells buttery, buttery cheesy, cheesy, creamy. You know, you had said this This reminded you a little bit of a cheesecake, the mm, filling. Right. I was, and it is sort of along that line. I was thinking how, I mean, could you put like a strawberry topping or blueberry preserves? Um, or? You know, once it cools, you could actually take it in you know many directions with a, a fruit topping so I see how it's kind of a cross between a cake and a pie in fact I was doing a little research and, and a lot of people call it uh, chess squares chess squares okay because they come out like ooey gooey squares squares like, like a brownie and one. that's what we'll cut it into unfortunately we can't do any of that until this cools completely oh. so Ralph <laughs> You're just going to have to enjoy the smells. All right. Okay. Until we can enjoy the taste. Yes. And it should, um, you know, again, remember the filling had three eggs in it. So it's going, that puffs it up as it cools, it'll kind of settle down a little bit. And when we come back, I'll talk a little bit more about what I learned about the history. Oh, good. Of good. The name. I'm curious. Just yes. By. All right. Just by cake. Just cake. Just squares. Okay. Ralph, it's just slightly warm. Yeah, you want it when it's warm, but not too goopy. I mean, um, yeah, you really do need to let it cool. And it's been a good, gosh, hour and a half. Oh, don't remind me. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> since it came out of the oven. So it's it's cool. I'm going to actually maybe take it off the rack here. And we're going to cut into this southern chess cake. Cake. Not pie. Okay, not pie. Although we'll have to do a chess pie one of these days. Yeah, chess pie is the more famous, popular one. And as I said, this was also known as uh, chess squares, what Kevin made uh -huh. today. And researching the name, you know, people always want to find the definitive answer on how something got its name. But there really doesn't seem to be any one definitive answer on... How the name chess pie came about but there are some funny and interesting stories one is that a woman who ran out of ingredients um trying to make pecan pie just made it with the sugar and the cream cheese and the butter and the milk and she they asked her well what is what is this pie what do you call this and she said oh it's Jess pie and oh, Jess pie became chess pie, pie. According, okay according great. to one of the folklore legends mm -hmm. and the other is that um in england many many years ago it was made with ingredients that were meant to last and it still has that quality chess pie is, is one of those pies that's very durable and you know made with ingredients that you can keep out yeah know. it's i can see that but it was in england it was uh they said the longer you left it in the chest the better it got so it was okay. a chest pie. pie but the one that seemed to be most popular was the idea of it being made long ago when chestnut trees were more prolific before there was a blight and people used 
chestnut flour for making and baking. Mm -hmm. And so this was a chestnut flour based okay, pie. Okay, so chess was short for the chestnut. Chestnut, yeah. Hmm, okay. I think all good possibilities. Well, however it got its name, you know, a rose by any other name still be a rose that's right and so this is, is in the so take a, take a look at let's just look show our friends i don't know how close you can get here's our look at our nice golden bottom layer you see that that was our yellow cake mix oh, right. and then here you have sort of a a custardy but firm look at that inner layer that's the cream cheese and eggs mm -hmm. and powdered sugar and you're going to love how it makes your kitchen smell when you take that out of the oven the first time. So remember how it smelled. Yeah. That's how it tastes. Wow. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. And the the crust. Yeah, what's that crust taste like? Mm. Wow. Buttery. Let me try. Well, yeah. I, I'm like, uh, I did leave a fork for you. Can you Here. put it down there for a second? Yeah. And you're going to like it because it is just warm. I love. I know. Out of the oven. Mmm. Oh yeah. Wow. Great texture. Smooth. You know, what I like is that creamy, cu that custardiness. You know, I love yeah. custard anything, but you're getting a little bit of that eggy custardness, which is outstanding. And, and this just tastes southern. Yeah, doesn't it's it? It's almost like a pecan pie without the pecans. It's very yeah, sweet. or all the corn syrup. Yep. But it's got that mm. nice mm. custardy. And that cake <laughs> making you do a happy dance. It's good. It's um, that cake um, bottom and crust is really good too. It would be great with a nice cold glass of milk in the summertime. Yeah. Um, I almost think coffee in the morning. To me, you could put fruit on top of this, but it would almost be too sweet. I'm then. sure now that I've tasted it, right. I agree. Yes. Um, but great with a cup of coffee or tea or milk. Yeah, delicious, and I think it's just beautiful looking. You know, it's a great kind of a cake pie type thing to take or as a dessert to a party. Yeah, and people can cut whatever size they want if it's you know. Well, be excellent. Tight. It would be excellent to share with the excellent crowd to share. So we so, shared it with you. We're glad you were able to share it with us. So we got a lot more to eat there, Ralph. <laughs> we'll 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 share it with some friends for sure. So we're so glad you could be with us on this special Cavalcade of Food at Home Edition uh, while we made this delicious Southern chess cake. Yeah, we couldn't do it without you. We appreciate your viewing and liking and supporting Cavalcade yep. of Food. Absolutely. And we hope your summer is going great. And we're going to look forward to seeing you again real soon right here on Cavalcade of Food. Bye, everybody. Bye. Bye for now. Till next time. Adios.